Some engines are built to perform, while others are built to last, but a rare few manage to do both so well that they become legends. These machines have stood the test of time, shrugged off abuse, and outlasted even their own manufacturer's attempts to phase them out. So what makes them so unstoppable? Today we're diving into the greatest American inline-six engines that just won't quit. Jeep AMC 4 liter. Jeep has been running six straight engines for a long time, way back to 1948. Over the years, they built some real workhorses, like the 258, which was everywhere by the time it launched in 1987. But that same year, Jeep had something even better up its sleeve, the 4-liter engine. It first showed up in the Cherokee, then made its way into Wranglers in 1991. Over the years, it powered the Comanche, Wagoneer, and Grand Cherokee, proving itself again and again. So what makes the 4.0 so special? Simple. Reliability. Take care of one, and it'll just keep going. Plenty of these engines have cleared 200,000 miles, and some have gone way beyond. One Jeep owner even racked up an unbelievable 500,000 miles on his Cherokee's original 4.0. The secret to its toughness is in the design. Instead of using an overhead camshaft, like many modern engines, it sticks with a tried-and-true system of rods and lifters to open and close the valves. Plus, it was one of the first inline-six engines to feature fuel injection, a huge upgrade at the time. Early versions with this system are often called Renix engines. Motor Trend had nothing but praise for the 4-liter engine in the 1997 Cherokee, calling it powerful and ready to tackle anything, whether it was deep snow or a steep mountain trail. This engine has earned a legendary reputation for reliability and getting the job done. Ford 300 4.9-liter if there were an engine hall of fame, the Ford 300 4.9-liter would be a first ballot inductee. The thing is legendary among truck guys. Some say it's Ford's best engine ever, while others go even further, calling it the toughest and most reliable engine of all time. You won't find many people badmouthing the 300. It was never the most powerful, but it was built like a tank. Ford kept it in the F-Series trucks for over 30 years, and for good reason. It could handle just about anything and practically never broke down. And it wasn't just for trucks. This engine found its way into everything from wood chippers to snow plows. It could even run on different fuels like natural gas. Built from solid cast iron, it was ridiculously durable. And some of these engines have racked up over 500,000 miles with nothing more than regular maintenance. The real magic of the 300 was its torque, that low-end pulling power that made it perfect for towing and hauling heavy loads. Sure, it wasn't the fastest engine out there, but nothing else came close when it came to workhorse reliability. If you wanted a stronger gas engine for towing, you'd probably have to switch to a diesel. And while it wasn't built for speed, the 300 had plenty of potential. With the right modifications, some people have pushed these engines to over 300 horsepower, even using them in drag racing. Part of its genius was in its simplicity. The cast iron block and basic design meant fewer things could go wrong. Instead of a timing chain, it used a gear, which lasted much longer. It was the definition of built to last. In fact, Scott Donahue proved just how tough it was by winning the Baja 1000 three times with one of these engines. Cummins 6PT 5.9 liter 12V diesel. If you're a diesel fan, the 12-valve Cummins is like the wise old grandpa of powerful engines. Built between 1989 and 1998, this 5.9-liter beast is known for its durability, simple design, and ability to crank out serious power while still sipping fuel efficiency on the highway. It's so tough that you'll find it not just in Dodge trucks but also in Jeeps, classic cars, and even dragsters. What makes this engine so special? Well, for starters, it's built like a tank. The cast iron block, head, and strong internals mean it can rack up hundreds of thousands of miles without breaking a sweat. Its inline design naturally produces a ton of low-end torque, making it a favorite for truck pulls and heavy-duty hauling. And the best part? It's incredibly easy to work on. Need to replace the water pump? You'll have it swapped out in no time. Now, while this engine can handle well over 800 rear-wheel horsepower, the stock bolts holding everything together might not. That's where ARP comes in. They make stronger bolts, designed to handle the extra strain. One of the coolest things about this engine is its mechanical fuel injection system. No complicated computers here. Just simple tweaks with basic tools that can unleash extra horsepower. Start by modifying the AFC housing, adjusting the star wheel, removing the fuel plate, and disabling the turbocharger's wastegate. 
With these changes, you could gain 100 horsepower or more. Better yet, many parts from newer 5.9 liter Cummins engines fit right into the older models. Swapping in a P7100 injection pump, for example, can take horsepower from 350 all the way to 600. It's a bit of a project, but if you're chasing big power, it's worth the effort. Chrysler Slant 6, 225, 3.7 liter. If there was ever an engine that refused to quit, it's the Chrysler 225 Slant 6. It wasn't the biggest, and it wasn't the most powerful, but man was it tough. These things just keep running and running. You practically can't kill them. Chrysler introduced the Slant 6 in 1960 to replace an older engine, and right away, it proved to be a workhorse. The first version put out around 145 horsepower with plenty of torque to back it up, but what really set it apart was its unique design. They called it the Slant 6 because the engine was tilted 30 degrees toward the passenger side. Chrysler had a good reason for this. It made the engine shorter, which meant it could sit lower in the car. That improved handling and made it easier to fit under the hood of the Plymouth Valiant, and gave mechanics better access to the parts. But Chrysler didn't stop there. They designed the engine to breathe better, letting air flow more smoothly for improved performance. It also had a shorter stroke, which helped it make solid power. And if you swapped in a better carburetor, you could unleash even more horsepower. Speaking of power, from 1960 to 1962, Chrysler offered a special performance package called the Hyperpack. This upgrade gave the Slant 6 a better carburetor and other enhancements, pushing it to near V8 levels of performance. And here's the wild part. This engine wasn't just for cars and trucks. It was so reliable and durable that it found its way into tractors, forklifts, and even boats. And because this Lance 6 was built to last, parts are still easy to find today. Ford Barra The 4.0-liter Barra engine first hit the scene in 2002 under the hood of the Ford Falcon. And ever since, it's been a legend in Australia. It's powerful, ridiculously tough, and built to handle serious modifications. People love pushing these engines to the limit, and the best part? The Barra can take it. Need proof? Back in 2018, someone built a Ford Falcon with a Barra engine that cranked out over 1,000 horsepower at the wheels. And here's the kicker. They did it using the original engine block and head. Not many engines can handle that kind of power without major modifications. And that's just for the street. In the racing world, Barra-powered cars are screaming up to 1,000 RPM and making over 2,000 horsepower, still using the stock block and head. These engines are just built differently. Even with a few basic upgrades, the stock Barra can turn a full-size Falcon into a rocket. Since the Barra was only sold in Australia, it doesn't have as many aftermarket parts as heavyweights like the LS or 2JZ. But that's changing. More and more builders in the US are getting their hands on them, thanks to high-profile builds like the Mighty Car Mods Cresta and Ben Paganoni's FPV F6 Ute. Haltech even makes a special computer for Barra Falcons. It controls everything the car needs to run, but it also lets you fine-tune the engine like a pro. Another Australian company, Plasma Man, offers all kinds of performance parts for the Barra, from intake manifolds and valve springs to intercoolers. GM Turbo Thrift Inline 6 Chevrolet's Turbo Thrift Straight 6 was a true workhorse, built to last from 1962 to 2001, but while the name was used across the lineup, it really all started with the 230 cubic inch version in 1963. This engine was a game changer, smaller, lighter, and built with seven main bearings instead of just four, making it way stronger than the old Stove Bolt 6. Then, in 1966, Chevy introduced the 250 cubic inch version, the one most people remember today. One of the biggest upgrades was switching from four main bearings to seven, which made the engine not just tougher, but also smoother. It was lighter, more compact, and so durable that Chevy even built a bigger version just for trucks. That heavy-duty version stuck around until 1989. The Turbo Thrift 6 also had a lot in common with Chevy's legendary small block V8. It shared similar rocker arms and combustion chamber design, making it feel almost like an inline version of the V6, though not quite the same. And when it came to racing, Chevy's straight six held its own, proving just how capable this engine really was. Hudson Twin H Power Back in the 1950s, Hudson cars were a favorite for drivers wanting something different. They were smooth, solid, and built to last, but what really put Hudson on the map was a game-changing engine, the Twin H Power. 
That's the powerhouse that made the Hudson Hornet a legend. This setup added two carburetors, upgraded the manifolds, and cranked the power up to 160 horsepower. It was such a hit that by 1952, Hudson made it a standard option on the Hornet. With twin H power under the hood, the Hornet could hit 60 miles per hour in just over 12 seconds and reach a top speed of 107 miles per hour. Hudson proudly claimed twin H power was the first American six cylinder engine to use two carburetors and take two intake manifolds. By precisely mixing fuel and air, the engine breathed better and burned fuel more efficiently. And thanks to its tough construction, with massive bearings and a heavy duty crankshaft, the Hudson Hornet stood as the most powerful and impressive six cylinder engine ever made in America. Chevy Stove Bolt 6. Chevy is known for its legendary V8s, the small block, the LS, and the massive 454. But before any of those engines roared to life, there was another Chevy powerhouse that laid the foundation for them all, the Stove Bolt 6. Not many engines can say they lasted 70 years, and even Chevy's legendary small block V8 only stuck around for 48. The first versions of this engine earned the nickname Stove Bolt 6 because the bolts used on them looked just like the ones found in old stoves. The original 1929 model was a 3.2 liter engine making 50 horsepower. It used a unique splash lubrication system for the connecting rods, but had pressurized oil for the main bearings. It also featured overhead valves, though it had low compression and heavy pistons. The original Stove Bolt 6 stayed in production until 1936. In 1932, Chevy increased its power to 60 horsepower. Then, in 1934, they made more improvements and pushed it up to 80 horsepower with a 3.4 liter version. Thank you for watching, and see you at the next one.